In today's video, I'm going to show you how I pieced together a focus stacked image to create a nice pin sharp photo just like this one. So in last week's video, I was out in the forest on location and I was trying to show how I take these focus stacked images. I showed a technique where I used burst mode on my camera, holding the shutter down and just slowly turning that focus barrel to make sure I got lots of focus points on my subject. And that can be a really quick way of getting all those photos, but then it does mean you've got a lot of photos to piece together when you get back to your computer. So that's what I'm gonna show you today, the second part of this story, how I actually put all those photos together, do my edits and make sure that everything is nice and sharp. And I usually do this in two different ways. Sometimes I use Photoshop, there are merge tools in there already for focus stacking, or sometimes I use a program called Helicon Focus, which is specifically designed for focus stacking. And I'm gonna show both methods today because there are plus and minus points for each. So let's get started and take a look at the photos in Lightroom. So these are basically the shots that I've selected as my main focus stack ones. I think if I just select all of these, this is 34 individual photos and it takes us right from the beginning and you can see that focus traveling through the scene. I basically overshot in order to make sure that I had enough images. Because in a previous video, I did a focus stack where I only took three images and surprise, surprise, it wasn't anywhere near enough. So I think I overcompensated slightly here because I did a lot. There are hundreds um, of images in total for, for different compositions. But crucially, I also made a mistake in the image that I published last week, something that I'm actually gonna do very differently here. And I will explain what that is when we get to it. So let's start off. And as I say, I've selected these, I've given them a one star, selected these image here, uh, 34 different shots and this gives a really nice focus range but what I like to do before I actually do the focus snack is just make some basic exposure and color adjustments just so that I'm taking a decent starting image over into whatever program I'm using to do the stack so in this case I don't really want to do a lot to the exposure I might just drop the shadows give it a little bit more impact I'm also going to slightly cool it down it's a little bit warm something like this I think already looks quite a lot better we've taken out some of that sort of yellow cast and I might play with the hues and saturations a little bit here maybe up those greens make them a little bit more vibrant um, emeraldy green in the background pull those yellows down a little bit now the oranges is where all that lovely pop from the um, the top of these lichens or lichens um, on the top so I don't want to I don't want to change that too much I want it to stay a really nice bold red tone but not pink we don't want it to go pink I think that's already looking good. So now I've got these selected, I can go right click on here, develop settings, and I can just click sync settings, synchronize, and that will paste those settings right the way across to all the images. And so we've got the exact same tones, exact same everything on all these shots, which is perfect. So at this point, I have to decide how I'm gonna put the focus stack together. Do I wanna take it over into Photoshop or do I wanna take it over into Helicon Focus? And I'm gonna start off with the Photoshop way. So I'm gonna right click, edit in, and then open in uh, open as layers in Photoshop. And this is gonna take all 34 of those pictures, stack them up as layers inside one Photoshop document. It does take a while, it is quite time consuming, particularly if your computer isn't that powerful. So that is one reason already not to do Photoshop. Doing it in um, Helicon Focus is quite a bit quicker, but let's take a look at how this works. Open as layers. And now we play the waiting game. This really will take quite a long time. So actually, while this is going on, what I'm gonna do is show you how I selected these um, images for my focus stack and crucially, what I think I did wrong last week. So if we take a look over at these focus stack points, we've got one that's uh, uh, very close to the camera where we've just got some of this log in focus. And then our final one only goes as far as these small rear, um, uh, growths here um, but it includes these ones here these ones here and the reason I've chosen these is because these are basically all on the same plane they're all basically in line with each other the one that I did last week also included these ones back here and if I go and find that original image that I posted last week which is this one here. You can see that I've actually tried to get more of the background ones in focus, including this one here, which 
I actually don't think looked that good anymore. I'd basically taken too many focus points um, going right the way from the front and right the way from the back. And in hindsight, having looked at these shots again, I actually like the depth that is uh, is maintained by not trying to have every single thing in focus, but just making sure that our actual subject is in focus. And in that case, our subject really is these main ones here, and again, the ones that are on the same uh, the same sort of focus plane, um, going right across the middle that are in line with each other. This one here, you can see, is very much like a bit of background, and I like having that in shot but it doesn't need to be in focus. It doesn't add to the story. So I'm really trying to be selective in what I'm having in focus and also what I'm intentionally not having in focus in order to create that sort of 3D depth. It might be easier to illustrate that once we've done that focus stack, but that's really what I try to keep in mind here, like figuring out what should and should not be in focus. And having just already done a little test of this, I think the shot we're gonna to see today is better than the one that I did last week. But here we are, everything is now stacked up. So you can see over here in our layers, that is 34 full resolution raw files all stacked up. So what we're gonna do is press shift, select them all, and we go first of all to edit and auto align layers. Now, of course, when I'm moving that uh, focus wheel, it's possible that the camera position could shift by just like the tiniest fraction when I'm taking my images. So this will just line things up nicely. But again, it's gonna take quite a lot of time because these are 34 raw files. Okay, so it's lined everything up nicely. Um, you can see that we've got this sort of uh, bit around the edge and that's actually where it's had to resize um, some of the images because that size relatively does change as you change your focus. Um, but now that is all lined up, we go back to edit. This time we go to auto blend layers. We make sure that stack images is checked and we press okay. And again, we have to do a lot of waiting. So why am I showing you two different methods of doing this? Why am I showing Photoshop and Helicon Focus? Well, two reasons. If you are pretty casual at your macro, you may be just getting into it, then you've probably already got Lightroom and Photoshop, but maybe you haven't yet decided to spend additional money on buying Helicon Focus. It's not super expensive. I think it's something like 60 pounds or you know, $80 a year, something like that. But still, that's, you know, particularly in a time when we don't all have loads of spare money, you maybe don't want to be spending extra money on buying one piece of dedicated software. But if you've already got Photoshop, then you already have these tools and sometimes they can work really well. But as we'll see, Photoshop does tend to be a bit slower and also, I do find that it doesn't always do a great job, particularly with more complex scenes like this one. Um, and in fact, I'm already anticipating a couple of errors, which we'll take a look at. But actually, it's done a really nice job. Let's have a look. We've got that depth. So already, let's just very quickly take a look at, the, at what I mean about that depth. This one here is now lovely and out of focus. As a result, it gives that effect that that is actually physically much further away um, from the camera than these ones here. So you really get a sense that there are um, different layers of these lichens, lichens in the scene. If we go back and take a look at our first one from last week, which is this one here. We don't have that depth because I've tried to keep this one in focus. And as a result, it kind of suggests that everything is on the same plane and it isn't. Already, I think that this is a better looking shot. So I've tried to be more selective in which images I'm using for the focus stack here as a result. And it's important that you do the same. It's important that you look and decide which you want in focus and which you don't. But I mentioned some errors and already we can see where they are. On the edge here, because of the way that it resized them, this isn't in focus at all. That happened on the last one too, and that's fine. I just cropped into here because I didn't really need this one anyway. Um, if we look here, We've got a tiny little error here, and there are some tiny little blemishes around where it hasn't quite done that stack properly. It hasn't quite worked here for some reason. There's some various bits of ghosting that hasn't done it properly here, for example. And again, here on this side, things haven't worked out quite well. Overall though, it's actually done a better job than I expected. Sometimes it really can struggle um, doing these focus stacks, but let's leave this here for now. 
And let's go and use the other method. Let's go and use Helicon Focus and I'll show you exactly how that can be done. Now, there is a way of directly going edit in and then edit in Helicon Focus, but I don't like using it because it creates duplicates within Lightroom and I find that a little bit annoying. So what I'm gonna do is select these all. So with them all selected, right click, go to export, export, and I'll put them in a new subfolder. Let's go with um, uh, Lichen Stack. Helicon, copy that, and I'm just gonna change the uh, file name to that as well. You don't need to do that, but it just makes my life a little easier. And I'm just gonna change the image format from JPEG to DNG. It's DNG is lossless, it is a raw format, so we're not getting any kind of like compression artifacts from uh, uh, from JPEG. And let's go export, and now we can take it over into Helicon Focus. So now we're here, I'm gonna click here to open our files. Uh, not those, that was just a test. What did I call it? Lichen stack, lichen stack. Lichen, lichen. I've been saying both, lichen stack, helicon. There we go. So here they all are. I'm gonna select them all and press open. And then very quickly, this will bring them all up into this big stack. And of course, just realizing now that exporting as a DNG raw means that my settings from what I just did in Lightroom haven't been transferred across. Um, hands up if you expected that to happen, because I didn't. Foolish, anyway, irrelevant, that's not the point. Uh, now we've got them all here in um, Helicon Focus. I can do the uh, the focus stack render. Now I tend to use method B, the depth map. Honestly, I'm, I, I've never found a lot of difference between method A, B, or C. Um, and you can play around with the sliders, you can redo the renders, but typically I find that basically the default method, which seems to be method B and these settings tends to work absolutely fine um, for most things. And certainly when I did a test worked fine for this. So let's click render and we'll see how quickly it goes through it. Very quick. And it took ages in Photoshop. This is our focus stacked image. And again, we've got this nice one out of focus back here. We can move this around. It's actually even done a much better. Look at that. This is perfect with this little one here. Whereas in Photoshop, it looked very odd. And this one's completely out. Whereas this one's looking great. This one, we haven't got any um, sort of weird artifacts around the edge. Whereas again, in Photoshop, um, you can see that there's almost like a slice where it hasn't lined it up properly. So yeah, Helicon Focus has done a much better job and typically I find that it does, um, particularly with more complex scenes. So I'd say if you're just beginning in your uh, macro journey and you're maybe doing maybe three, four, five or six image focus stacks, Photoshop will probably do a perfectly good job for most of this. But if you are trying to take your macro a little bit more seriously and you are doing focus stacks that are 20, 30, 40, 50 or more images deep of these quite complicated scenes, I think you will definitely find the benefit of um, of getting uh, Helicon Focus. It does do a better job for the most part. But if you really want to do macro um, well, it is the piece of software to use. So at this point, we can save it. Save it as a TIFF file. Again, that's lossless and I... Um, and I like it. Now we can go and open that file in Photoshop. And ooh, now it's opening it with some weird looking colors. So let's bring those back. Something a bit more like this. That was about where we were, wasn't it? Something like that, I think. Yeah, pull those shadows down. It's slightly messed up our colors from the previous one. So I think it is quite clear that um, Helicon Focus has done a better job than uh, Photoshop here. And it's why typically for these things, I will use Helicon Focus, but often I will use both. I'll give one a try and then I'll give the other one a try. Yeah, definitely I think it's done a better job here um, in, in Helicon. And at this point, now it's here. I'll do a little bit of cleanup. There's a couple of sort of things hanging around. There's some tiny little spiders um, webs going across, which um, I don't mind, but if the spider was in there, then great, you know, it will really add to the photo. But here, I just think it looks a little bit messy. Um, but crucially, the thing I wanted to show was, yeah, this thing being out of focus. And I just think that is so much better. And I think that goes to show that if you go back and just have another go, you kind of, you don't just do one quick image and, um, and then export it and then consider it done. If you spend a little bit more time refining your process, then you can always end up getting some better results. Because in this shot, I've done a little bit of color and exposure adjustment, and then we've done the stack, and that's basically it. And already, I think this is a much better image than the one that I actually published on my video last week. 
And all it took is for me to just spend a little bit more time looking at the image and really thinking about which images I want in focus rather than just selecting them all and running a focus stack. Generally, I think it looks great. I still don't really like this one being chopped off the edge of the screen. So what I would probably do is bring in a crop, maybe not a 16, maybe a 16.9. I think I did 16.9 last time. I can't actually remember, to be honest. And I would just pull that in. I'd maybe do it at this point here, just so we keep this little, um, uh, this little bit of lichen there. Like and subscribe. <laughs> I think something like this is already a stronger image. And maybe we can do a little bit more. Go to camera raw filter. This brings up the same controls that you get in Lightroom. So we could play with the highlights a little bit. I could maybe go and add linear gradient, just sort of darken down um, this part of a log because it is quite bright. Just really helps draw the eye to those vibrant red caps um, of the lichens themselves. And we could always go through and have a look at various presets and things and see if there's any of those that we might want to apply or use it for inspiration. Like I really like that sort of faded effect. I don't want to apply that filter. So actually what I'm going to do instead is go to our curve, but I'm going to bring up this. And as you can see, it's just adding in that nice little bit of sort of filmic fade by bringing up that black point. Something like that, I think looks okay. Close that down and then maybe over in color grading, go to our shadows, just add a little bit of, a little bit of blue because I liked that when I looked at that preset before. So there we go. That's how I would try and mimic the effects of that preset in a couple of tools, just in case you don't have the same ones. I think that looks pretty cool. I really like that. Maybe it's just down to practice. Maybe it's just that I've spent the time having another go and having a deeper look, but I definitely prefer this image to the one that I put out last week. I mean, it's, it really is all about that focus and just being more selective, but also I think this is a, a more subtle edit. I think it's, uh, I think it's a bit more artistic. Whereas this one I think is a little bit too, um, a little bit too punchy, um, a little bit too crisp. And I'm just not that keen on some of the colors in there. So I really, I much prefer what we've done here. Um, but of course, that's just down to personal preference. So um, of course, make sure uh, to let me know what you think about these images. Maybe you prefer what I did last time and maybe you prefer having every single bit um, in focus. As with all photography, there is no right or wrong way. It just comes down to personal preference. So what I'm trying to get across is, is sort of some of the things that I'm thinking about when I'm taking photos and when I'm looking back at my own photos because I am not, a macro master as I said in last week's video I'm very much on a learning journey and every time I go out and do a shoot every time I do an edit like this I end up finding that I'm learning another thing about it and actually that's what makes it so exciting for me because I really love trying new techniques finding ways of refining things and it's also why I really like re-editing old photos um, so that I can see if I can do a better job and often I find that I can but if you have enjoyed this video, if you have found it helpful, do please hit that like button. If you don't subscribe to my channel already, then do please consider giving that subscribe button a, a little hit. Um, there's plenty more content like this all over my channel. Uh, but that's it for me for this week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.